This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 375, Simple Reminders for the Holiday Season, by Kate Flanders of kateflanders.com, and I'm your personal narrator, Justin Mollick. This is a podcast which could also be called an audio blog or a blogcast, because I simply read to you from the best blogs I can find with author permission, and it's been quite a while since I've read to you from Kate Flanders. Her site used to be called Blonde on a Budget, and was mostly personal finance related material, but she's rebranded to her name and writes about broader topics too. And today, as we're leading up to Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa, we're going to continue posts about the holidays. And she has a new one, and it seemed perfect. So with that, let's get right to this post and start optimizing your life. Simple Reminders for the Holiday Season by Kate Flanders of kateflanders.com I love this time of year. I've always been the girl who unabashedly starts listening to Christmas music in November, sings while walking down the street by myself, even if strangers give me funny looks, watches the same movies over and over again, and feels like a kid on Christmas Eve and morning. I've filled three mugs with hot chocolate and taken my brother and sister on a tour of displays since they were kids, and I still marvel at how a single string of white lights can warm up a room. Now, in saying all of that, I will still admit that the holidays don't feel quite the same as they used to. As a family, we're trying to figure out what our new traditions are, and I imagine it's going to be a little different each year now that we're older, My parents aren't together, and we won't all be in Victoria. The fact that we no longer exchange gifts actually helps, as it takes a lot of pressure off and makes the holidays so much more meaningful for us all. But it still takes a little more effort to feel the same spirit I used to. So when Laura asked if I'd consider writing something about the upcoming holiday season, my first response was no. But the more I thought about it, I realized that most people feel some amount of stress this time of year. While you might not be able to relate to mine specifically, I can appreciate the chaos and anxiety that gets stirred up by all the shopping, spending, parties, and obligations. It's not always as easy as some people make it look. If anything, we should help ease the stress from one another. If that sounds like what you need, here are a few simple reminders for the holidays. Number one, you're allowed to shop and give gifts. Just don't let that be the core of what your holidays revolve around. Number two, spend your money mindfully. That means knowing what you're buying, how much you're spending, and most importantly, why? Number three, you don't need to buy kids stacks upon stacks of gifts. When I look back at my childhood, there are only a few gifts that I even remember receiving. And at the end of the big day, I only went to bed with one, the new books. Number four, your presence is the best present. Number five, the second best present is making someone laugh. Number six, play and have fun. Center the holidays around artwork, games, movies, music, light tours, etc. Number seven, it doesn't have to look perfect to be perfect. Your home doesn't need to be decorated a certain way and gifts don't need a certain wrapping paper or bow. Your home is a home. It is meant to be lived in and loved in. How it looks shouldn't represent you or how you treat the people inside it. Number eight, the mess you make in your home, in the kitchen, around the table, under the tree, etc. is one of the best messes you'll make all year. Don't clean it up too soon. Number nine, eat and drink mindfully. That means enjoying some of the goodies in front of you, but continuing to make the good decisions you make every other day of the year. Number 10, remember the holidays aren't a happy time for everyone. As Garrett suggested last week, try to bring gratitude and compassion into every interaction you have. Number 11, if the holidays aren't a happy time for you personally, please reach out to someone, a friend, a family member, a stranger. Ask for their company, for a hug, for an ear to listen, or for whatever else you might need. Humans are hardwired to help, and connection is the best way we can do that. Number 12, try to see every challenge as an opportunity to spread the holiday spirit. Like Kara said, throw kindness around like confetti. Number 13, open doors for others. This is the simplest thing you can do, but is extra helpful this time of year. Number 14, tell someone how you feel about them. I wish I could remember who said it, but I recently heard someone on a podcast describe how her father wrote her a letter expressing all the things he was proud of her for each Christmas. That's a tradition I need in my life, and I think I'll start it with a few friends this year. Number 15, slow down. Linger in bed for a few extra minutes. Chew a little longer. Walk a little slower. And for goodness' sake, don't speed on the road. Number 16, remember that it's okay to say no. The holidays can be stressful enough without a full calendar it's okay to take some downtime for yourself and your family. Number 17, do what you can with what you have in all areas of your life. Number 18, 
Don't compare your gifts or traditions to anyone else's. Number 19, accept the holidays for what they are, not what they should be. And number 20, when in doubt, go outside. You just listened to the post titled Simple Reminders for the Holiday Season by Kate Flanders of kateflanders.com. And don't forget, if you're an entrepreneur or an aspiring one, I have a brand new podcast that I'm hosting together with my friend and business partner, Lee. We read to you posts from many of the authors I read right here, plus other wildly successful entrepreneurs. So come check it out. Just search for Optimal Startup Daily. And that will do it for today. I hope you have a great one and I'll catch you in tomorrow's show, the shortest day of the year for us in the Northern Hemisphere. See you there where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.